This is it! After a long year of rumors and leaks, Navi is finally here, and it looks pretty good. During AMD's presentation, we got all the specs for their two new GPUs, the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with the design. The 5700 XT is absolutely gorgeous, but it's a blower design. The lines across the GPU and a slight bump on the edge makes it look like a supercar, but it's a blower design, and the LED lit Radeon logo at the top looks amazing, but... Okay fine, it's a blower, but it looks cool. On the other end, the 5700 looks like the Vega chip, but without the red corner. Now let's take a look at the specs. Let's start with what is different since they do share quite a bit in common. The 5700 has 36 compute units which equates to 2304 stream processors and has a max FP32 compute power of 7.95 teraflops. In terms of clock speeds we get a base clock of 1465, a boost of 1725 and a game clock of 1625 megahertz. The 5700 XT model has 40 compute units, 560 stream processors and 9.75 teraflops of compute power. The clocks start at a base of 1605, boost of 1905 and a game clock of 1755 megahertz. We still don't know what the game clock is but once again I believe that it either replaces the base clock when in games or at least acts as a secondary boost when the heat is on. And now for what they share. Both GPUs share the same amount of memory at 8GB of GDDR6. The clocks for the memory is also the same as the current Nvidia lineup at 14 gigabits per second. Now coming back to the differences, there is their TBP, which is what they call their total board power. It's at 180 watts for the 5700 and 225 watts for the XT model, although they both have one 8-pin and one 6-pin power connector, which apparently AMD put there for us to get as much over clocking as possible. That's quite nice. Both cards come with a brand new encoding chip called the Radeon Multimedia Engine. It was built from the ground up for streaming and apparently has a 40% improvement in encoding and up to 8K encoding in HEVC. Alright, that was a lot of specs, but how do they perform? Well, they might not be the RTX killer we hoped they could be, but they are still really powerful cards. At 1440p, AMD says that on average, the XT model performs better than the RTX 2070. On this graph, you can see a 22% improvement on Battlefield 5, 15% in Metro Exodus, but it gets beaten in Civilization 5 and Tomb Raider. The rest is kind of neck and neck, but the XT model beats it at around 3 to 6%. Weirdly, they said that it beat the RTX 2070 consistently, but I mean, their own graph says something different. At least the 5700 beats its nearest competition, which is the RTX 2060, and it does so consistently. And as usual, Lisa Su kept a little surprise at the end with a special edition 50th anniversary 5700 XT. This is basically an overclocked 5700 XT at 1980 megahertz with a black and gold GPU shroud. It does look sweet, I have to admit. Another thing AMD introduced is a suite of new developer tools for better fidelity in gaming. One of them is called Fidelity FX, and it's basically something that adds extra details in your gameplay, and apparently it will not impact your performance at all. Another one of these is called Image Sharpening, and it's pretty much the same as Fidelity FX, just a little bit less accurate since it wasn't coded directly into the game, but once again, it enhances the image without impacting performance too much. For esports, they introduced Radeon Anti-Lag. It's a click-to-response latency reducer, and it reduces the latency by up to 30% compared to the RTX 2070. Now for the price. The Special Edition 5700 XT comes in at $499, which is quite nice if you wanted to splurge on a piece of AMD history. The regular 5700 XT is at $449. That's $150 cheaper than the RTX 2070. I mean, sign me up. I don't care about ray tracing at that point. As for the regular RX 5700, it's 379 which is actually a really good deal considering it beats the RTX 2060 consistently for just 30 bucks more. 
All the GPUs will be available on July 7th, although the special edition is only going to be available on AMD.com. Now in my opinion, the XT is definitely the better buy. You get amazing performance for quite a great price, but the 5700, no XT, still needs to be properly compared to the 2060 to see its value. So what do you guys think of those GPUs? I mean, they're definitely proper competition for what is up there right now, but they're also pretty late to the party. I don't expect Nvidia to come out with a brand new GPU architecture anytime soon, but those super cards that have been rumored could definitely drop the price of the RTX 2070, which might put a wrench in your buying decision. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the Navi coverage, hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them down below, I'll do my best to answer. As usual, you can click right here or here or here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, I still tapped on my table and snapped.